Hello everybody and welcome back to MHTV. We've had a bit of a break over summer but we're back for our hundredth episode. Um, as you can see I'm in the car um, at some services in Birmingham being a mental health nurse. I'm flexible about where I can find space to work so if my signal does go um, bear with me but um, I'll hand you over to my colleague Nikki and then we'll come back to tell you about tonight's event. Okay, Nikki, over to you. Absolutely. If you want to join in tonight with our fantastic guests, um, we're going to be talking about heavy metal therapy, which is a really exciting subject. Um, if you want to join in on Twitter, just use the hashtag MHTV. If you're watching us on Facebook Live, thank you very much. Hello, everybody. Um, and if you just pop your questions in um, or any comments you've got, I'll feed them back to the, to the group. So thank you very much for joining us and we look forward to having a really interesting discussion. Vanessa? Yeah, thank you. So I'm going to hand over to um, our guests, Angela and Kate, first of all, to introduce themselves and then we'll get down to talking about heavy metal therapy. So Angela, um, over to you first of all. Oh, no pressure. Me first then. <laughs> <laughs> You're on my screen first, so in no particular order. <laughs> I'm going to change my first name. It's not fair. I feel I'm biased in terms of Zoom. It's always like, and your first name? Yeah, anyway. Um, <laughs> hello, everyone. Um, I'm Angela Glaves. I am um, I'm, I'm a mental health nurse. I'm a lecturer. I'm a metalhead. Those are in no particular order. Um, yeah, that's me. It's nice to be invited along. Thanks for having me. Great. Thank you. Thanks for being here. And then, um, Kate, over to you. Yeah. Hiya, um, my name is Kate, Kate Quinn. Uh, I'm a clinical psychologist by trade, uh, work in the NHS most of the time, um, also a metal enthusiast uh, and a co-director along with Angela and a couple of other people of uh, heavy metal therapy. Brilliant. So, yeah, obviously the obvious question is what's heavy metal therapy and how did you get into it? Oh, I'll let Kate take this one. Okay. <laughs> go on, go on, not boss. Um, yeah, they like, yeah, Angela likes to call me not boss because I don't like being called the boss. So she's not boss. <laughs> I'm head roadie, she's not boss. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We're, we're actually, we all have stupid nicknames, but anyway. That's, we like yeah, that. That's fine, <laughs> um, yeah, so the first thing is uh, to say is that I prob we probably shouldn't have called it therapy because it's not like therapy in the sense of, um, you know, like one-to-one -one counselling, talking, yeah. um, talking to somebody type of therapy. Um, really, it's, it's a community psychology project and it's all about the... Um, the therapeutics of engagement with extreme music and that scene, mm -hmm. you know, like the heavy metal scene. Mm -hmm. um, so it, it's quite kind of peer support orientated, really. So it's kind of like uh, people who are metal enthusiasts um, and have a relationship to mental health somehow. You know, we, we share really ideas about um, how the music might impact on people's well-being, you know, in a helpful in a helpful way. Um, so it's kind of like. A bit like a library in some way so we've got things like recovery stories uh playlist blogs uh we have an engagement with research but it's anything really to do with heavy metal and mental health yeah so and how would how do people get involved in it you say it's a community initiative so yeah so we've, we've always linked into social media uh initially we started off just being social media and then decided to put everything on a website as well so it's like yeah it's got a bit more of that kind of library or resource kind of uh, feel um so the, on, it was just more organized because the facebook page kind of got you'd lose things on the feed that people would give us in terms of stories so kate yeah. made a, a website so we can you know tap things across and we can you know search for mm. different different areas and stuff that we've got it's just easier yeah so it's mainly social media do you have physical meetups as well we I do, do now. Yeah. <laughs> we, didn't, we didn't start off like that. So, so did you start I, I think, in lockdown or did you start just during... before? So we're about we're yeah. about four years old. But um I mean I thought at first that this was like really well niche. So like um mm. I can remember um so me and Angela we used to work in the same building, we've never actually worked in the same team, but um we clocked each other at a slipknot gig <laughs> like <laughs> Great. several years several years ago. Um and you know, you <laughs> spot a fellow you spot a fellow metalhead and you're like, okay. Hey, um we had, we had a chat about it afterwards yeah. yeah um so mm. when I sort of was starting to think about heavy metal therapy I contacted Angela and said oh you know I'm thinking about setting up this really like a little Facebook page um, yeah so that's what we wanted it like wanted it to be to start with um and I can understand you know if we can get 100 people to like this Facebook page will it will have been a success so we really started off with 
thinking that it was something that was quite niche, thinking it was just, you know, maybe sharing a few quotes, people interacting with each other a little bit on social media, um, but sort of didn't expect it really to kind of touch the lives of as many people as it as it has yeah. like now. Um, so we never thought about physical meetups or anything like that to start with. And now, um, you know, like we, we sometimes have a presence at festivals or we might have a stall somewhere, you know, metal events. Um, we might arrange meetups, with, you know, people say, you know, if anyone from the community is at whatever festival, you know, we'll have a little bit of a meetup there. So it is now like that, but it certainly didn't start off yeah. that way. Yeah, sounds great. I love the way it's developed naturally like that. And um, it's great there's two women as well, isn't it? I think. Has there been, um, in terms of engagement, has there been a sort of gendered sort of uptake on it? Or would you say that it's kind of across the board? Yeah, so I probably ought to say, to be to be fair, we have lots and lots of volunteers that help. And of our, we've got four directors now because we're a community company. That's um, great. And of those, of those four, three of us are women. So we, are, we yeah. have got a to- at least one token bloke, Ben, if you're out there. <laughs> Um, and, uh, but I, I suppose in terms of my clinical career I've spent a lot of my career really working with men and the um, yeah. like particular like angry young men let's say I suppose that's been mm. my sort of area of interest and I guess heavy metal as a uh, genre is generally pretty male heavy mm. yeah. in terms of artists and fans and you know that's kind mm. of well, well established mm. um, so heavy metal is kind of quite into gender split tends to be a bit more male uh, but then therapy tends to be a bit more female yeah yeah so we've got like a we have actually got pretty much a 50 50 split maybe slightly more men 50, about 55 percent men mm-hmm. that follow us um yeah. but a lot of our contributors are men mm. interestingly so that's a bigger that is a bigger split is we get more contributions from men than women yeah interesting yeah yeah, Nikki, what do you want to think about heavy metal that particularly kind of unlocks people's ability to talk about how they feel? Mm. Because it's got lyrics and content that you don't usually get. She says, making a sweeping statement about all other genres of music. Sorry, mm. music. You get things in metal that you don't typically get in other genres. You get topics yeah. talked about in, in metal that you don't. Mm. You Find, you get you know the taboo things you get stuff in you know like the slipknot and the, you know i hit voices and you know yeah, yeah. you get you get things in it that i think people go ah oh, yeah that's that's either how i'm feeling or yeah that's that's kind of what's going on for me at the minute and i think that kind of that resonates quite a lot with people yeah. and plus you know if nothing else it's really good to jump around and bang your head you know head banging about and then yeah. feel a little bit less I don't know angry or mm. a little bit yeah mm. I mean there is something about the energy of it I think you know it is extreme yeah. and mm. that's kind of, that's the appeal that is the appeal of it I think you know mm. there's a fearlessness about it I think which is I find quite yeah. interesting you know not not afraid to make people uncomfortable sometimes not afraid mm. to go into territories that you know to, talking about kind of like suicide or sadness or anger that sometimes make people feel very uncomfortable mm-hmm. and I think as well there's something around being distinct from other forms of music because of the way that you dress the way that you look the way that you sort of perform that love of that particular type of music and you know it is a stigmatized music as well mm-hmm. in some ways but there's something about when you're pushed to the margins it gives you more space sometimes yeah and an identity and, and you know who's with you and you know who's not with you and that, that I wonder if that sort of like you know was feeling like a family or a community or tribe or whatever it is actually is something that feeds into it as well. What do you guys think? There's there's been quite a lot of that in the the stories that people have been kind enough to share with us mm-hmm. that you know being almost like on the fringes of or outside mm-hmm. yeah the usual kind of society is mm-hmm. you know, quite comforting because they're with others who are also on the outside. So it's mm-hmm. yeah nice to kind of be with a group of, of similar people that are going through maybe similar stuff or you know uh, very much um you know into the same kind of bands or there's there's some kind of um common ground that you can you know go and stand and, and chat with somebody about their band t-shirt you know that they mm-hmm. that you find quite easy to do in metal that you know maybe people wouldn't do 
if they were in another kind of social situation, they wouldn't go over to somebody and start chatting to them about, you know, whatever mm. the talk they got on that day. So it's I think it's like kind of community. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, that's it. It does come through in the research a little bit that that's one mm. of the things that people say about mm. the metal community. Mm. It's quite, you know, they find it supportive, and there's a lot of, I suppose, you think about like shared identity markers, you know, belonging and all that kind of stuff. That seems to be um, important mm. in terms of if you think about the mechanisms of why something might be helpful for someone's well being. The, 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 the two things that come up around metal, particularly around emotional processing mm-hmm. and community. Mm. Can you tell us a little bit more about that? It's really interesting. Yeah, very. Um, so I'm just going to start off with I am a bit of a nerd, so if I just go off, like, you know, please go do. Like, yeah, no, back. Go on. We like that. Um, Angela will be like, if it gets to Yeah, yeah. Well. <laughs> Angela will because Angela just enables her. Angela's no. <laughs> <laughs> helmet in the corner. Angela's Angela's not particularly, you know, non-nerdy as it is. To, to, I'm not going to help you. Thanks for that clarification, Angela. I'm going to help you rein her in. A pair of us are just like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Then tell them about that bit. Oh, sure. And we are, you know, as a community, we are pretty, we are a bunch of nerds, really. You know, there is a lot of, of stuff about Nerd know, is just engaging somebody with passion for something. Thing. And the curse of the world is people without passion for anything. So I'm all for it. So tell us about this. I'm, I'm happy to, you know, reclaim the the, the 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 idea of being a nerd. I don't think it's a bad thing. But anyway, I could get really into this. So just to, just to be aware, of, um, like in the '90s or whatever, the people really worried about heavy metal, as in, like, um, you know, there was quite a bit of research about um, like heavy metal and suicide. You know, I don't know, Satan worship, and if you play it backwards, and yeah, all, you, know, you're, you know, school shooting, all kinds of all kinds yeah. of things to do with music taste and um essentially they were predominantly correlational studies so you know people who go on to do this you know that let's say feel suicidal might like heavy metal or whatever and and I guess probably pushed a little bit by certain political ideologies or Mm. kind of the academic background of some of the people that were doing doing Mm. this who let's say certainly weren't metal heads for example um so it, it you know heavy metal comes with this real kind of negative connotation or it did you know in in um back in the day um so they've, they've explored that a bit more now and, and kind of thought about well what is going on with metal and um you know what is you know drawing people to it why is there this this mm. um, narrative amongst metal fans that it's actually very helpful for them rather than than um, a negative a negative thing mm. and um so more recent research sort of seems to suggest that those correlation rela- correlational studies were flawed in various ways but particularly around things like direction of relationship so um, is it that people who have who listen to metal have mental health problems or is it that mm. people who perhaps are you know m- mentally vulnerable in some way emotionally vulnerable in some way are prone to, to those kinds of mm. yeah stressing experiences are drawn in some way to a particular kind of kind of music mm. and know, what, what it doesn't show is that whatever. if you listen to heavy metal you will then become ill that's not what no, and there's no, there's no, yeah. yeah. Some people That's say that, been. but it's not what the science shows at all. No. Yeah. So if you talk to um, the research that's been done on metal fans, suggests that a lot of them use um, listening to music as a kind of uh, a way of processing emotions, particularly anger. Mm-hmm. So um, I mean, we talk a lot about catharsis and the idea of catharsis, but actually that you know it helps people to work through things and they're uh, let's say turning towards an experience rather than turning away from it, and so much. I mean, a lot of people suggest that music is a great coping strategy, but so much of that is about, well, essentially distraction. Yeah. So yeah. when you talk about music as a coping strategy, um, yeah. you're normally saying, you know, well, if you listen to relaxing music, you can turn off, you know, whatever yeah. it is that's going on in your head or somehow yeah. cancel it out. So it's that very much that opposite action type idea, yeah. which has its place. So I'm not saying that, that, that that's not good. But I think with metal, what you're doing is you're kind of turning turning towards some of those feelings a little bit. Mm. yeah which is a different kind of emotional coping isn't it mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. definitely I wonder as well if it's a music that seems to have its own kind of sense of power as well and I think maybe if you're feeling like you don't have power to be around you know the the, the noise the the vibration the the connection is something that's helpful for people mm. Mm. yeah because it's so intense you know mm. This, you know there's some very very intense about it and yeah and powerful yeah. and like I mean I a lot of people talk about going to gigs particularly as being like quite a, a coping strategy mm. and um 
you know, I've been there myself and Joe Rundle has the idea of, you know, you've, you're amongst like-minded people and you're mm. having this, you know, this experience and you really get into it, it's really immersive, mm. immersive experience. It's kind of mindful really in a way, you know. It's, mm. Absolutely. And I think there was something about heavy metal that sometimes is a little bit akin to kind of dance culture in that you have that really strong rhythm that brings people mm-hmm. together in a way that very few things that other things do. You know, really heavy drum beat is something that really yeah. pulls a crowd to one one beat, one heartbeat. And I think that mm. makes you not feel so alone sometimes. Yeah. And there is a sense of community, isn't there? Like mm. you talked about, like, you know, it's not just about the music. It's about mm. a way of dressing, a way of being, mm. like you say, a way of expressing emotion. It's quite physical, isn't it, as well? Yeah. So I think yeah. all those elements. If you've ever seen a circle pit, you'll um, you'll 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 witness, you know, a lot of people all all coordinated, all kind of like no, nobody goes right, okay, so everybody in three, two, one. It's not like you know, kind of synchronized swimming, kind of, but you'll just you'll just see loads of people just start, and it's it's just the energy of it, and the like. It's just either you're in it and you're mm-hmm. like just part of that energy, or you stood on the side going. Look at all of that, and mm. yeah, the, the mm. community of you know people just you know kind of looking after each other while they're just you know thrashing around, <laughs> thrashing around and looking really angry and shoving other people at the same time as being quite happy inside and also being you know respectful of themselves and others. If you've mm. ever fallen down in a pit, you know, like three people kind of hoik you back up. Mm. So, yeah, there is. Yeah. It's interesting that um, it's quite a sort of emotional experience and that we associate emotions with um, mental illness and anger. And yet people who go to football matches and chant and swear and scream, that's not associated with with mental illness, is it, generally? So something interesting there, just thinking about it. I don't know what that's about, but it just strikes me. Maybe it's about the sort of subculture of it. I don't know. What do you think? I don't know, maybe it sort of harks back to the thing that, you know, Kate was saying about, like, the the old research and that was kind of, mm. for whatever reason behind it, focused on metal music and that's kind of been, you know, then highlighted and was stuck in the media and stuff, so maybe that's kind of... Yeah. I'm just doing being mainstream because a lot of people will go to football matches, that, but there's something about metal which has a marginal identity. Yeah, muscle culture, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. yeah definitely, yeah. there's unfortunately still kind of examples of you do get like discrimination in some way circles against kind of that you know alternative subcultures and things like that and we you know um we're big fans of the Sophie Lancaster Foundation they sort of um you know have a lot of similar kind of aims and things like that and um obviously that you know they've done loads of work around the idea of actually people experience hate crime Mm. yeah Mm. well I remember that was the goth hate crime wasn't there yeah yeah yeah, I really do think about that and it's the same about the emo communities now, isn't it, in schools that are kind of associated with mental illness, self-harm, marginalisation, not kind of fitting in with, you know, it's all that kind of stuff, isn't it, the way we kind of other people and classify them I've got not some, following the mainstream. Mm. Some questions from Dave, obviously. Fantastic Dave is in the background today. Um, doing Marvellous. Doing all the bits and bobs, but he's put some questions out. If you, are you okay to answer them if I read them out? Yeah, lovely. His first voice point was to say um, he wouldn't have necessarily thought of nerd being related to heavy metal. Um, but he was saying, is there any issues with organisations, you know, kind of like health organisations, I guess, in particular, not wanting to encourage it? Is it seen as antisocial? Is it seen as something which maybe uh, mainstream services are a bit shy of? Um, <laughs> there's a couple of examples of struggles, I would say. Where just I think I think people get it or they don't. Yeah. You know, and that there, there's, there's something about that and um one of the things that I've discovered is that there are metal heads everywhere <laughs> so okay. I, I can't tell you how many times I've we are among you yeah I've contacted somebody about a blog I thought you'll you know this you know this probably isn't going to be you know their thing or whatever and I'll have got something back and someone say well, well actually you know I love Black Sabbath or you know what, whatever it is mm. um so you know when people do get it, I feel as if they really connect with it, and then you know they're really they're really interested in it. But I think we mm. accept that maybe not everyone is going to feel is going to feel like that. I think mm. probably in some ways the thing that's more difficult around, like let's say, mainstream mental health services, is that um, because we've come from that kind of like peer support and um, like mm. uh, privileged and lived experience position, mm. um, 
that in some ways is actually more difficult than um, the metal bit. Mm, okay. Because obviously, you know, a lot of services don't work like that, and that's still that is still a fairly you know marginalised oh, idea, definitely. isn't it? In in, yeah. in services. Well, getting people paid and respected, all the kind of stuff that you need to do with co-production. So that's interesting, actually. And um, he's also got another couple of questions. What's a good gateway artist? I don't know if that's actually the term I would use, but yes. <laughs> so if you want to start experiencing heavy metal. And are there any artists in particular that have talked about mental health and what have they said? Yeah, good question. Punk good is the gateway to metal. It just is. <laughs> <laughs> it's all a gateway. <laughs> Punk was my gateway to metal, so I don't know. Angela, you might have other ideas about. But I'm older than you, so like my my gateway to metal was like what is now termed as classic rock. So. <laughs> <laughs> oh, isn't it life? <laughs> yeah, any, anything could be a gateway. I, yeah, what's oh, a good? I can't. I can't answer. What's a good gateway to metal band? Well, maybe we can put it as a question for anyone to join yeah. in. On. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's them. I yeah. mean, I think you know, there's definitely something about. Um, people tend to well apparently your music taste is like almost fully not fully formed but it's, it's very influenced by what you liked when you were like 12 13 14 yeah, that sort of age. definitely um so mm-hmm. I mean, when I was 12 13 or 14 it was like new metal yeah. um which was you know was around in at that at that period so mm. I can remember things like you know getting really into Slipknot and mm. dare I say Limp Biscuit and things, things like that like, they <laughs> you were do like, not dare yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they were like, like yeah, dare not rap metal me. was my gateway into, into metal um, but now, obviously, it's it's different. There's a lot of metalcore and other things, um, other things that are out there. Mm. Um, I do think that the very extreme stuff is an acquired taste. Um, and now I can listen to things that um, probably when I was younger, I'd have thought, oh no, that to sound very old, that's just noise. Mm. Uh, whereas I've kind of tuned into it now and, mm. and, and yeah, really, really, really enjoy it. But surely that must be the same with classical music, doesn't it? People will yeah. start with something that's a bit more generic, something, and then wander into something that just gives them pleasure. I mean, that's what should happen. Mm. Yeah. Is that, is that many, like, different areas of metal that mm. you can't... I, I can't pick a gateway because you might go, right, well, you might like that, and then you might like some metal, but you might hear something and go, well, I don't like that. But then, you mm. know, there's eight other genres of metal that you might go, yeah. Do you have like, um, like Spotify like links or anything on your website? Yeah, so if you go to heavymetaltherapy.co.uk forward slash playlist, um, all of our playlists are um, That's the available on Spotify, YouTube, uh, I, uh, Apple Music, Deezer, <gasps> what is the other one? Amazon Music. Yeah. There you go. Brilliant. So there, there you are, Dave. That's what you want to be doing. <laughs> getting yourself yeah. along to those playlists and getting so excited for like literally like every, well, Maybe not every single emotional experience you can imagine, but pretty much there's a pretty wide yeah. like spectrum of, of things. Yeah, yeah. And they're um kind of I don't know, co-produce if you want to say that, or mm. I don't know how you'd say it, but um the community kind of come up with those mm. things. So I'll say, you know, uh, can we're gonna build a playlist on low mood mm. and we'll get like, you know, 50 or whatever suggestions. So the anger playlist is like over eight oh, hours yeah. long. Because mm. no, like you might imagine trying to select angry heavy metal. Yeah. Mm. So um, his other question was: Are there any um, artists that talk particularly about mental health or well-being? Loads, and actually, um, it's Beth. almost there's almost too many to say. Yeah. Their two albums really good that talked about mental health. Uh, A lot of metalcore artists are now yeah. are very um, very mental health orientated. Mm. Um, or they, either they talk about, or they have lyrics, and but or they, or they also might you know do stuff and and talk about mental health in, in other ways like there's um oh is it gobsmack it's the guy that does the scars. oh the scars foundation sully uh no just have, i probably said his name wrong i'm sorry however you pronounce it sully i'm pretty sure about that bit hmm. um there's the howard from um oh i don't know bad, bad, not bad wolves no no he was lead singer for the second lead singer of um kill switch engage you kill switch engage yeah so how he yeah he's um he's had quite a lot of mental health problems and is it people talking about their own experiences or yeah he's talked yeah about like you know how it kind of because that came he sort of talked about how that mm, led to him stopping as the singer mm. just kind of mm. and stuff and he didn't realize at the time that what was going on mm. and later on yeah so you know people talk you know share their own kind of experiences which is really good as well you know that gives other people 
kind of a bit normalization about you know this has happened to me mm, yeah yeah there's loads there's quite a lot of bands that talk about mental health in their mm-hmm. lyrics or and out of kind of the songs I think the other thing that, that Vanessa and I were thinking about was about kind of anger we were talking about that before we got yeah. started yeah mm. well you might say that anger could be the kind of master emotion if you think about heavy metal so that's probably mm. the, the thing that is the biggest mm. like theme let's say it just seems to be something that people in society are very frightened of. So how, how does it play out in terms of you, uh, of, of the people maybe in, in your group talking about or managing anger or experiencing anger and, and using music? How does that work? So um, the biggest narratives that we get about anger is that people say that listening to angry music calms them down, mm. um, which might be a kind of... Um, I suppose it's it's not intuitive, is it? But that but that's you know what what they say, and I assume it is this like again this idea that you know you turn towards something, you work through it, it reflects and validates yeah. what you're feeling about something, um, and that's helpful. Mm. Um, mm. And in some ways, maybe you know helps people to engage with that in a way that's less destructive. You know, I suppose we you know we think a lot about bottled up anger. What happens if you don't do anything with you with anger? Mm. Maybe it does. You know, it helps you do something with it. Mm. Yeah gives you that forum for releasing it in a way you know screaming along to the lyrics or like you know like I said you know jumping up and down yeah that kind of Mm. way to release it in a way that's safe yeah but anger is quite taboo still in our society isn't it there's there's still something about anger and um Mm. you know I suppose as a therapist they come across this idea of like you know gosh how do we contain and control anger it feels like something's Mm. got to be part of it um, so there's still a lot. I think there's still a lot of fear about, you know, anger. Working with anger, what it's like to be angry. Mm. Yeah, it gives the space to be angry as well. I mean, mm. particularly I would guess for women, because from a very sort of early age, sort of women's anger is seen very differently to men's anger. Mm. Like, yeah. um, it's classified completely differently, isn't it? You know, yeah. The language that's used about sort of angry women, sort of shrill and all that kind of stuff. When you feel sort of the angry young man is a kind of like a kind of sexy stereotype, isn't it? Whereas the, nobody wants to hear an angry woman. It's all very upsetting for them. Yeah. <laughs> and there's that perception that women internalise their anger, whereas men are more, you know, more likely to externalise it and let it all out kind of physically, through exercise or whatever. Mm. Yeah, I guess this turns that on its head as well. Mm. Um, yeah, and we, we've been privileged to work with some... So, people send us stuff um, all the time or, you know, the greens kind of get involved with stuff and we've been privileged to get involved with a lot of, um, you know, female artists who are, you know, in the, in the metal scene or, you know, female fans of metal who are like, a, you know, in the mosh pits and all that, all of that yeah. stuff. Um, so, yeah, I mean, again, this, there was some, some of the research about, um, like, women in metal sort of in the early days suggested that a lot of it was to do with, like, groupies and following, like, male metal heads and things yeah. like that, but that's not that's not been kind of our experience of it in the the communities that you know a lot of women engage with engage with this stuff yeah and that's very quite sexist as well really isn't it as a kind of explanation of why women would engage with it you know yeah yeah yeah, you wouldn't apply that explanation to men would you at all following you know artists where there was a female vocalist you'd be you know be accepted that men like the music because they like the music but if women like the music it's because they're idolizing the musician Mm. yeah it's interesting mm. yeah got a couple. so have we shared so you've got a website as well haven't you have we we'll share the link um yeah, we've done all that there. share the link and also to the crowdfunding yeah. page as well yeah that's quite a useful thing yeah tell us a little bit about the crowdfunding so um i told not boss that um we should get some bits which um Kate said eventually yes to because you know just like me just a bit you know we don't want to ask people for money because mm. I feel guilty about doing that but on the other hand yeah. we um Kate came up with this idea Kate really wanted a squishy brain hmm. a stress ball that's like a brain okay. yeah she wanted a squishy brain. She wanted a stress ball that was like a brain. So Kate came up with this idea that she really wanted a stress ball that was like a brain. Um, so we kind of like put us heads together about you know how do we how do we essentially have some some 
some things because we always say that yeah. you know, we're talking about like t-shirts and whatever we call them up. we want all the things in, a, in an ideal world we'd like, we'd like all the things to, to, to give out and stuff um so we talked about things like um you know pens and whatever so that when uh or, or if we're kind of lucky enough to be invited to um some festivals or, or other places uh, like talks and some com- a couple of conferences that me and Kate have been to that we can give out some promotional things mm. So yeah. I um, sort of slightly snuck behind Not Boss's Back and did a Google about companies that would provide um, said materials um, with our logo on mm-hmm. and, and came up with a, a, a quote and, mm-hmm. and we looked at the quote and unfortunately said, well, that's nice, but we, we need a bit of money, mm-hmm. which, you know, mm-hmm. we kind of went back and forth on about, you know. It's difficult because we... It, this thing never started of being about money yeah, and um, about I suppose yeah, selling it, stuff. Yeah. it's grown in a way that we maybe didn't anticipate and mm. um now we're a sort of like you know not-for-profit or whatever um mm. community yeah. interest company um that enables us to do some stuff that um we hope would be of benefit like wider benefits to the metal mm. community um mm. but there are some you know inevitable expenses and things like that so for example we think it's great health promotion to be able to have things yeah. that um you know let more people know about us for example mm. um but yeah we don't we, <laughs> we need to sort of be able to kind of pay for those things so it, it's a bit it's a bit uncomfortable but um we're getting you we're getting our head around it aren't we so again bear in mind we started off the facebook group and this is <laughs> like expanded way beyond uh way mm. beyond that mm. yeah but i think a lot of people who get involved in kind of me- sort of passion projects around mental health face exactly the same problems that you guys are going mm-hmm. through and it's really interesting to talk about it so well, as i was saying all like anger is the taboo actually money it's the big yeah thing. absolutely who's got it how do you get it can people afford the thing that you need that they most need to have how do you move how do you yeah. sort of like access funding it's always such a, yeah. a big mess yeah i think you know kind of we're a bit of a mixture of people with lived experience people mental mm. health profession backgrounds or whatever but most of us are pretty grounded in the idea of the nhs and like things that should be free yeah <laughs> at yeah the point of delivery and that's mm. pr- and i think that's um kind of got quite ingrained into us and the idea of like even the idea of like some metal like a lot of metal bands being really c- commercial and you know all of that stuff even that's a little bit difficult or something that's you know we've kind of thought about navigating you know, not everyone can afford to go to gigs not everyone can afford band merch whatever it is mm. and i suppose at the very least, all of our resources, um, most of which are kind of like downloadable and stuff like that, as long as you've got the internet. Yeah. It's free. Yeah. Yeah. But, yeah. I mean, it's really impressive looking at the kind of, even looking at the sort of website with the resources you've got there, with um, mm. the, the interviews that you've done with people, the kind of discussions you're holding a space for. Even if somebody is like, you know, really uh, far away, like in some village somewhere, they'll be able to just contact and know that somebody else is out there. Who cares about the same things that they do and that's massive i think I so there's, a, there's a lot of stuff about metal being quite an imagined community so um hmm. it's it's quite possible to identify as a metalhead be part of the metal scene feel like you can engage in the metal scene and not um necessarily even know another metalhead hmm. <laughs> so like personally not like hmm. having having met one so, so hmm. there's because it exists online and because yeah. you know a lot of young people kind of have lives online and i think yeah. through a lockdown actually this was this was quite a, a big thing thing for us mm-hmm. um it doesn't necessarily matter if you you know you're not going to all of your gigs and meeting up with your friends mm. in person there's mm. there's this this yeah. sense of you can get that sense of community even from yeah from the online so i don't think it's the same quite the same as, as mm. and you know i'd hope that there's space for in-person stuff as well but um mm. the, yeah there's, there's, def- there's definitely some people who you know their engagement is predominantly online with other metal people mm. yeah, it makes yeah. sense so where are you heading to next then because the stuff you mm. do like it is really impressive so what's for, what's next for you guys well it's a bit of bit organic so we're hoping it just carries on, carries on like <laughs> well, organic will read we're making this up as we go along no totally a little from column a and a little from column b you know there's, there's nothing wrong with that <laughs> i get that Makes sense. I have a chaos wall at home, which basically is like a collection of multicolored post-it notes of all the different like plans that, that mm-hmm. may or may not happen with, with heavy metal therapy. So um, like we launched a podcast. That, oh, well, it's like a bit like a radio show. That's quite, quite exciting. We've got a couple of people 
who are getting you know much more invested in research stuff you know like doing their research projects and these these things so we're growing all of that mm. um that as well um so yeah we you know we love to come to festivals go places um you know have presence physical presence at places as well um possibly even um some people have expressed that they'd like to set up you know, like peer support type groups which probably won't be kind of run by us but you know we might kind of yeah um, support in some way so um yeah a lot of a lot of exciting things we are starting to get close to the end actually but now questions are coming in which is always the way <laughs> yeah that happens every time doesn't it so uh Shamela, thank you very much for joining us have you thought about becoming a social enterprise national lottery fund a lot of le led work um joining mm -hmm. late don't worry you can watch it later <laughs> so, um, yeah, so we are, we are a CIC, which is a bit like a social enterprise, um, but that's very new to us. Um, mm. So we're still kind of exploring how we how we navigate that. So we are from predominantly clinical backgrounds. I don't know anything about you know applying for a grant or anything. Like mm. that. So we're kind of getting our head around that that bit. Um, yeah, yeah, if, yeah. That's that's kind of the way that we've decided to to, to go. It makes sense. It makes sense. Is there anything that you guys want to bring up that we haven't asked you? It's a tricky question, isn't it? It's like in an interview when people say, tell us about the your, your weaknesses and like that. What? <laughs> You're supposed to say perfectionism, aren't you, I think, in that question. You're supposed to say that. Well, I say biscuits. That's my weakness. Biscuits. Especially okay. the <laughs> caramel chocolate one. That's good. Is that the thing that we didn't ask you that you wanted to mention as well? Biscuits. <laughs> I love caramel biscuits. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, if you join our kind of, so we've got like a private Facebook group. If you join us, the entry question is, "What is your favourite biscuit?" And we won't let you in unless you tell us what it is. Hobnob. <laughs> and I and the one of the few prejudices I openly admit to in life is people who love rich tea biscuits just can't trust them. <laughs> <laughs> Mark my words, people. It's not a trustworthy type. <laughs> yeah. I feel as ever we are digressing, but I think. For our 100th episode, that was appropriate. Yeah, yeah. Um, Vanessa, so, what's your favourite biscuit before we finish up? Mine. I was just thinking about that, and I was thinking I do like a rich tea, but it's not my favourite. I think ginger, ginger biscuits would be my go-to, really. Um, obviously, good dunk on a ginger biscuit, isn't it? Because they're quite solid, so they retain yeah. the good yeah yeah um, you just heard that bing? It was my phone going off with um, David just, just writing Jaffa cake. <laughs> We don't oh, yeah. to go into whether well, Java cakes is actually that a biscuit or not. Yeah, but it's <laughs> biscuit. I think just biscuits full stop are nice, aren't they? Yeah. <laughs> of any kind. Yeah. I like the fact that most animated we've all been is actually in this like, last five minutes. <laughs> Makes me feel that there's hope for the human race. Yeah, yeah. Maybe we need a session on biscuits next. <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's when I knew the NHS was in trouble when they yeah. took biscuits. So, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean to be fair you know this whole project has essentially been kind of a little bit of extreme music which you might even think of as cool a mm. lot of sort of middle-aged nerding and mm, quite yeah. a bit of like sort of British humour so like British and Yorkshire humour so you know yeah. those things are very important you do know that Yorkshire technically is part of Britain right <laughs> yeah but specifically Yorkshire so we, we've oh, like, very, this, like, very uh, technically <laughs> Um, somebody designed this thing to be rate, which is like in a sort of like uh, metal logo thing, which has gone around quite a bit. And yeah, a lot of people like that. <laughs> I love that. So, um, is there anything that you, you want to like a message you want to leave people with or yeah. an action they could do before we finish? Um, I would say, and I'll let you do one, Angela, in a minute, but uh, I would say um, if you know a person that likes heavy metal or you're an, uh, an enthusiast yourself of heavy metal, please have a look at some of the stuff that we've got because it, it is quite a you know comprehensive resource now mm. um, yeah so good for the metalhead in your life and we've shared the links on twitter and facebook yeah. haven't we for people who yeah. want to find out and what's the facebook group called if people want to look um, so it is just forward slash heavy metal therapy uh, for right. the facebook page but the group itself is called the metal health mosh pit right great nice one yeah, well, we shared that, haven't we, Nikki? Yeah, so, there's a couple of yeah. people watching um, directly on um, Facebook, so they can go straight there from here. Oh, brilliant, that's yeah. great. Yeah. Angela, was there any sort of thing you wanted to to talk about before we finish up? Um, just that, well, that's kind of leading into the, the, the other Facebook page that, you know, you you might have, you know, this, this idea that metal is, you know, very scary and the mm. people are scary and stuff, but we obviously, you met Kate and I, 
we're not, you know, yeah. the community, there's lots of different genres. You might have heard some sort of metal and gone, no, that's not for me, you know, if, if you were like, you know, you might want to yeah. give it another go. Uh, and for the mosh pit, especially if you are a fan of memes, yeah. metal, me. mental health, a little bit of horror, you know, film kind of, that's that's probably going to be where you might want to, you know, that would be our gateway, I would suggest, you know, giving that a go. Yeah. I mean, we do a good line in what I'd call dark wellness. So like um, a lot of this, we've done quite a lot of reflections over over the years on this idea that maybe not everybody is attracted to that very um, kind of positive, positive mental attitude, kind of encouragement, you know, have a cup of tea, have a bath, listen to some nice relaxing music. Mm. And that's, that's the be all and end all of kind of well-being yeah. interventions. Um, yeah. So like I wrote something in the silent magazine called Die Cry Hate, mm. which is an op- the opposite of live, laugh, love. Um, <laughs> we have quite a lot of that stuff that we kind of share on the. That's my uh, new we have, philosophy. We have, we have Wellness Wednesday, which is yes, uh, yeah, which is Wellness Wednesday, where uh, wellness yeah, my invert, yeah, usually come up with. There all. is something weirdly oppressive though about having to be cheerful all the time because yeah. sadness, sadness yeah, makes people uncomfortable. Yeah, cheerfulness. Yeah, it's, positive, yeah, it's, not, it's not real, is it? No. Uh, no. So mm-hmm. light and shade, and that's what you've brought to the table. Mm-hmm. Fabulous people. So yeah, oh. an avid fan of you know searching things like Instagram and, and the, the wonderful accounts that there are on there. I'm going, oh, that's a very nice Wellness Wednesday kind of anti. Let's all sit in the field kind of thing. I mean, that's useful for some people, yeah. But you know, for others, it's like, no, I'm I'm sick of the plinkety plonkety little symbol of music. Yeah. yeah. So avid fan of finding some some uh, some means for that. I think it's very important to have different options for people, and then I think. Yeah. Very, very, very excited and happy to see that this work's going on. It's really encouraging that people with passion are talking passionately about mental health and well-being, mm. and, you know, being a bit real about it. It's really yeah. exciting. So um, if anyone is um, watching and has the opportunity to go and look at the resources that we've tweeted out, please, please do. This is um, it's very different from your usual kind of mental health music therapy yeah. type work, but very exciting. So, yeah, very okay. Yeah, yeah. I was um, I was just thinking. I was listening to a podcast earlier, and then um, the DJ on it who'd gone through his own sort of mental health and substance misuse issues was saying that he used to think music was something you listen to, and now he sees music as a feeling. And um, and I think that really links into what you've been talking about tonight quite nicely. Actually, I mean, he was talking about dance music, but as mm. Nikki says, is that there are kind of parallels between the two cultures, aren't there? So. Yeah, that's so my good to finish on that is, I think. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, thank you both. It's been really interesting. Yeah. And um if you're watching, you know, do go and check out the links and get involved as well. Absolutely. Thanks for having us on your hundredth episode. <laughs> yeah. Um apologies for the, the lack of corpse paint. Um we will next time. Uh, should you, you know, ever next time. Yeah, we'd love to have you back. So yeah, yeah, we would. You're welcome anytime. Yeah, bring the biscuits next time. (laughs) Have a taste off. We'll have a virtual (laughs) biscuit party. Yeah. (laughs) Do you know what? That's a way better idea than anything else I've had (laughs) today. So thank you very much, everybody. Thank Um, you. Wish you all a good night, and thank you very much for your support. Take care. Good night. Bye. Bye bye. Bye. Bye.